So guys, we continue study chapter 6, Supply, Demand and Government Policies, and in this video we're going to look at the policy of price ceiling by looking at the case study lines of the gas pump. This case is about the scenario in 1973 when, when OPEC increased the price of crude oil all over the world. Guys, remember OPEC, this is organization of petroleum exporting countries. So this is just, you know, a certain countries that have a kind of, you know, um, organization and they agree on the price of crude oil. So, and what they did, they increased the price of crude oil all over the world. So the price of crude oil has increased for whatever reason. Remember, since we use crude oil to produce gas, gasoline, it means that something is going to happen on the market for, for gasoline. So if this is the market for gasoline in the United States, and initially we had a certain equilibrium price and certain equilibrium quantity, so then when the price of crude oil had increased, something is going to change on this market. And remember, from chapter four, we need to know three steps in analyzing new equilibrium. First, we need to determine which curve is affected, supply or demand. Then we need to figure out which way the curve is shifting. And then looking at the um, graph, determine new equilibrium price and quantity. So crude oil, we produce to, uh, we, we use to produce gasoline. So therefore, we need to think about is supply and demand is going to be affected? Is this a determinant of the supply and demand? Since crude oil is going to be input price of producing gas, therefore supply curve is affected and supply curve is going to shift. Now we need to figure out which way supply curve is going to shift. Since the input price is increasing and now it's less profitable to produce each unit of gas, therefore supply curve is going to decrease. And remember, when we decrease in supply, we're going to shift it to the left. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take and shift my supply curve to the left. So what is happening on this graph? We kind of have a new equilibrium, isn't it? So here you go, new supply, old demand curve, they meet at one and the same point. So this is going to be our price. I'm going to put two and over here, we will have equilibrium two. So over here we would have, I'm just going to do like a little one. This is going to have quantity equilibrium too. Okay. So if we're looking at this, everything would be okay on the market. Yes, the price of the gasoline had increased. Nobody really wants to do that. But, you know, this is the, I guess, natural thing that happened on, on the market after the input price is increasing and we would have lower quantity. But government at that point thought that, you know what, it's not really fair for buyers to pay this higher price for the for each gallon of gas. And what they did, so guys, follow me on this graph. What they did, they, let me do a different color. They imposed a price ceiling that was lower than equilibrium. Remember, this is our new equilibrium right now on the market. So this equilibrium is not taking place on this market anymore. So we're looking at this new equilibrium and government said, you know what? No, 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 no. What are we going to do? We're going to impose a price ceiling in whatever this amount is. I'm going to put this price C, price ceiling. Okay. And it was lower than the new equilibrium. Remember from the previous video, what is going to happen on the market? Well, at this price, I'm going to go and meet with my supply curve. So therefore, over here is going to be my quantity supply. I know it's a kind of complicated graph by step by step. You can understand at the same price level. I'm going to go and meet with my second curve because I met with the demand curve. This is going to be quantity demanded quantity demanded. So therefore, our quantity supply is a little, our quantity demanded, it's actually pretty high. What are we going to have on the market? We're going to have a shortage. 
So this triangle is going to represent a shortage. Or over here, whatever is the difference between quantity supply and quantity demand, that this is going to be shortage in units. So when we um, or when the government imposed this price ceiling on the market and created a shortage for um, gas, remember, long lines were at the gas stations. Actually, at that time, um, I know that um, what was happening that government was dictated when your license plays, uh, plate was, for example, um, you know, ending up to an for example, even number, you can get gas, for example, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. If your license plate was, um, for example, ending on, um, um, you know, odd number, then you can get gas, for example, Tuesday, um, I don't know, Thursday, and whatever, Saturday. So there was a pretty, you know, a pretty big mess on the market for gasoline with the long lines and stuff like that. And everybody was blaming OPEC for those shortages. Do you think they were actually correct? And the answer is no. Yes, I understand that OPEC increased the price of crude oil, but did the OPEC create the shortages on the market for gasoline? And the answer is no. Government, by imposing this price ceiling, in, um, in created shortages for the market of gasoline. If government did not impose this price ceiling, our market would be in this equilibrium. Yes. We would pay a higher price for the product. Nobody likes that. But at least this quantity would decrease to whatever this quantity is going to be. Okay. And yes, people would buy less gas, but at least we're not going to have a shortage in long lines. So therefore, once again, initially, everybody was blaming OPEC for the shortages. But then, you know, government kind of look at their policies and they say, well, you know what? It took, you know a certain time they look at the policy and they say well you know what no actually we are creating shortages with our with our policy of price ceiling for gas so when they remove this price ceiling then once again price increased to this new equilibrium yes it's a higher price and then shortages were actually disappearing but um once again i'm going to do over here remember kind of recall of this graph Recall of this graph, we have supply and demand, and we have price equilibrium and quantity equilibrium. When supply curve has shifted, supply one, we have a new equilibrium on the market. This equilibrium over here doesn't take place on the market anymore. That's the new equilibrium we look, we're looking at. And then the government said, no, 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 you know what? This is this price that we're going to pay for each gallon of gas. This is actually too high, this price one, or what, what buyers are going to pay for each gallon of gas. This is actually too high. And what they did, they came and they put somewhere over here the price ceiling, whatever the number was, um, whatever the number was, but they put it lower than the new equilibrium. And therefore, what happens, so this is my actually shortage on this graph is kind of little over here, but this is our quantity supply that is less than quantity demanded, and therefore, we created a shortage. So therefore, if I'm going to look at this third step over here, remember, at new equilibrium over here, before we impose a price ceiling, okay, what happened? Our price had actually increased. Remember, I'm looking at third steps before the third step before we impose a price ceiling. Remember, our price has increased, isn't it? Price has increased. And what happened with our equilibrium? Remember, quantity over here. If you compare with initial, this is quantity one I'm going to put over here. It's actually decreased as well, isn't it? quantity equilibrium decreased as well and it would be over here if we didn't impose that price ceiling but if when we did we actually make quantity supply even lower quantity demanded is still lower than initial one and therefore over here we have our shortage so guys really quick the same um a kind of um, policy we can um we can analyze on the market for apartments i'm going to do it really quick so if this is the market for apartments, we have a rental price and we have quantity of apartments. And let's suppose initially our market is in equilibrium. 
okay so if if government is going to impose price ceiling remember higher than equilibrium what is going to be the outcome is not going to change and guys usually we're talking about um that if price ceiling is higher than equilibrium it's going to be non-binding non-binding constraint so it means that non-binding constraint it means market outcome is not going to change everything is going to stay the same actually that's they say over here this is a non-binding constraint it doesn't have any effect on the market but if we're going to impose price ceiling that is going to be lower than equilibrium then we're going to create a shortage for apartments remember this is the market for apartments so it's a case study that you have in your book please read that case and therefore when we created uh when we said well you know what eight hundred dollars to pay for each apartment it's not really fair for low income people so the the price control on apartments the main purpose of that is to help to help lower income people to make housing affordable okay just think about does government actually um you know reach the goal of help low-income people to make apartments affordable and the answer is no yes some people who are actually paying lower price for the apartments right now they're going to be better off but there are a lot of people who are not going to get um actually apartments at all because once again we create the shortage on the market guys just think about if you are a landlord think about what happening on this market if you're a landlord initially you were charging 800 dollars for whatever let's suppose like two bedroom unit or three bedroom unit apartments now government dictating you that you cannot charge higher than 500 dollars you as a landlord what are you going to do you going to not to fix the apartments you're going to not build new apartments and therefore some economists are saying that rent control rent control this is the best way to destroy the city rather than bombing because the apartments the quality of the apartments deteriorating remember we have um that mechanism for rationing um we're going to kind of let to rent the apartments to our friends and family first you know we're going to be very picky for example i don't want to to have families with the kids or i, I don't want to have families for example with you know with um pets or something Something like that okay so therefore um you know mechanism of for russian is going to you know to happen here we're not going to fix the apartments and we're not going to build the apartments so therefore in the long run the shortage for apartments it's going to be even higher and um remember when price ceiling is um imposed below the equilibrium then it's going to be a binding constraint binding constraint because um what it does it changes the outcome on our market okay our market outcome has actually changed so shortages um in the long run is going to be even higher i'll do a separate video on that and we talk about the rationing as well